Charcuterie is super popular right now, and we need a fancy way to show off our meats and cheeses. Now we can't just put these adult Lunchables on a plate, that would be too cheesy. We need a fancy way to show that we are fancy adults. I'm going to show you five different ways to make a charcuterie board from relatively simple to I'd say medium fancy. For our most simple charcuterie board, we're just going to need a saw and some sandpaper. So this one, pretty much anyone can do with very minimal tools. Now in order to get away with such small amounts of tools or such basic tools, we're going to need to be a little bit more picky about our lumber. In this case, I'm going to use this S4S piece of walnut. S4S means that it's already been planed and milled on both sides and then the edges have been cleaned up. This allows us to not have to do any milling and we're able to get away with this small amount of tools. The board is about 10 inches wide, so I'm going to mark and cut it at 20 inches. That will give us roughly a 2 to 1 ratio, and I think that that's a nice ratio for a charcuterie board. With your line marked, you can just use a fine tooth saw and cut along that. I like these Japanese hand saws. They leave a nice finish, and then just cut along on that line. You cheater! For sanding down the boards, I like to start at 80 grit, and if your boards are S4S, that should be well enough to get rid of the mill marks, and then you'll just work up to 220 from there. Then you should be good. For the second charcuterie board, we're going to add some more tools. In this case, the jigsaw and the drill. Now technically, you could get away with using a coping saw, but that takes a long time, so I'll be using a jigsaw. For the piece of lumber, I have some more of that walnut, and you can see there's a big knot in there. We are going to use the jigsaw and the drill to cut around that knot and make a really cool looking handle. And that'll help us get more use out of the wood and make a more interesting looking board. I want to make an interesting looking handle on this board. And so I'm going to trace out on a piece of paper and I drew these out here. I think I'll go with this second one and then I'll just cut that pattern out and then I can trace that onto the piece of wood. I lined up my pattern over the knot so that I can cut it out. That's a way that you can kind of salvage some weird looking wood if you have it. And then I just cut out that pattern. In this case, I'm trying to do it as close as I can to the line since I'll be cleaning it up by hand with sandpaper. To get down in all the little crevices, I like to wrap around a dowel, some sandpaper, and really work at that in there. This is kind of tricky to do and takes a while. Um, but yeah, you just got to kind of push along on this and get this smoothed out as best as you can. Using a random orbit sander is going to help speed things along. I typically will just take it at 120 grit unless I need to remove some really heavy mill marks. Now using this to round over, I found going over that edge instead of just following the edge all along gives me a lot more consistent of a rounding over. And this really is a lot faster than just doing it by hand. Even with the random orbit sander, there's still lots of places that I got to do by hand. The more complicated your shapes, the more hand sanding you're just going to have to do. For the third charcuterie board, the next tool we're going to add is a router. The router is going to save us a ton of time putting an edge profile. Um, we don't have to do it by hand with just the sandpaper. It's going to be more consistent and faster. So I like that. Also, we're going to be able to follow templates or route pieces into it if we want to do that. So the router is super useful for the third charcuterie board. The material that we're going to use for the third board is this air dried cherry that I picked up a couple of years ago. It's pretty warped and wonky, so I'm actually going to need to do some milling. So I'll be using the jointer and planer as well. If you don't do that, just make sure you pick up some S4S lumber that's already been cleaned up for you. But I really like milling. It allows me to use some more weird woods and um, also save some money in rough sawn stock. Now I want to make some templates out of MDF that I can use with a router. In this case, I'm just going to take those templates that I cut out earlier, tape them on there, and then I'll use some spray paint to mark out for me. I just find that faster and easier. And then I'll be able to take these and cut them out with the jigsaw roughly where they need to go. And that'll be really nice to have these thicker templates that we can use and they're a lot more durable. With the templates rough cut out, we're just gonna sand them up nice and smooth. You wanna make these as nice as you can because your router is gonna follow along. So any jagged stuff, you want to get rid of now so it's as smooth and as perfect as you want it for the template later. 
After marking the shape on the lumber, just cut out roughly, um, stay nice and away from the line. You don't want to hit that line, but you want to get a, as much stock as you can out of the way because we'll be doing a pattern bit to remove this with the router. When you have a really warped piece of lumber, I actually like just using a planer sled instead of going to the jointer. I find it's a little safer, at least for me, it makes me feel a little bit better. So in this case, I'll just put in some shims on this three quarter inch piece of plywood and then hot glue the shims and the board down to that piece of plywood. Now just send it through the planer until you get a nice flat face. Uh, we can then pop it off of the sled, then put it in upside down and run it back through to finish it up. Since I have a fairly straight edge on this and it's not very long, I'm just gonna run it through the table saw a couple of times to clean up that side and then flip it over instead of taking it to the jointer. That's me just being a little bit lazy, um, but it works really good if you already have a fairly straight edge on your boards. Now we're gonna use a trick that I learned from Crimson Guitars. Put blue packing tape on your piece of wood and on top of your template. We're gonna use super glue to stick these two together. With the tape trimmed up on both the workpiece and the template, I like to put the super glue on the workpiece and then just kind of spread that all around it. Once that's on there, we can spray some activator onto the template side, and then you can take that template and come and put it down on top of your workpiece. Make sure to press it on. It's gonna stick on real well, and it'll be ready to go in about 20 seconds to actually take it over to the router. Thanks, Crimson Guitars. Now just plop in your pattern bit into your router, and we're ready to route out that profile. With everything set up, come and use your router and you can follow along your template and trim that piece up to be flush. Now, if you're having trouble with the grain, you can also raise this bit up if you have a bearing on the bottom and then flip your work piece over and then you'll be able to run at a different direction and that can help deal with some tough grain. Now pop off your template and we're gonna take it over to the oscillating spindle sander and clean up as best we can on those edges. We're gonna put a round over with the router later, so you want these to be as clean as you can. I'm actually gonna make two of these smaller boards out of the cherry. The second one I'm just gonna have square and I'm gonna route out a couple of hand holds, just using the same method as the other one, except in this case, I'm only gonna plunge into it about a quarter of an inch to have my fingers in there. So not all the way through. So in this case, you need to have a bit that only has a bearing on one side. I'm gonna put in a quarter inch roundover bit. I think that's a really nice size to put on the charcuterie boards. After that, just bring it over with the sander like we did on the last one, sand it up all the way through the grits, and we'll be done with the woodworking portion of these two. For the four charcuterie board, we're gonna up our game in material. Now we're gonna use this slab of cherry. It's live edge on both sides, which is gonna look really, really cool but we need to deal with such a wide piece of wood. To do that, if it fits in your planer, you can make a planer sled and run it through like that, or you could do a router sled if you don't have a planer big enough, which I don't. I actually have some plans for a router sled if you want a nice fancy one. In my case, I'm gonna use my drum sander because it's wide enough to handle this slab. You wanna do a really good job getting the bark off all of the edges. Um, this is really important. I know some people really like the look of bark and they'll try to use epoxies and things to keep it on there, but that doesn't mean that it'll stay on there for good. And especially cause this is gonna come in contact with food. You don't want that to flake up into the food and stuff. So get rid of that bark all the way. With all the bark off, you wanna do a really good job sanding off everything that was underneath that bark. Get the last little pieces and get rid of all the real soft, hunky stuff up until you get to that sap wood. You wanna clean this up well. I wanted to try to use the drum sander to clean up this board, um, but it failed like right away and destroyed the last of my 80 grit sandpaper. So I got super lucky and technically after I removed all the bark, it barely fit in the planer. So I was able to plane it off um, and not use the drum sander, which worked way better. When we move to a slab, we're also gonna have to deal with cracks and holes and things like that. In this case, epoxy for the large stuff and super glue for the smaller things is gonna be really useful. It's just something you gotta do when you deal with a slab. 
For this little knot here, we're gonna actually use some baking soda to help us along. I've previously dyed this baking soda with some black dye, and we'll just use that and shove it into all the little crevices, and it dries super fast. You just stick it on there, and seconds later, you can already sand it off, and it'll be nice and finished. After that, just put that quarter inch round over all over on the board, sand it all nicely up, and we're good to go. For our fifth charcuterie board, we're gonna take all the techniques and tools that we've used in the other ones, and we're gonna put them all together on this part of the slab that I think is the most interesting looking, and just making the ultimate awesome charcuterie board. For the finish, I'm gonna go with Rubio Mono Coat. You know if you've been around here a little bit that I really like this stuff, and what's awesome is after it's dried, it's food safe. You can also do mineral oil. This is a more traditional finish, but I find it takes longer and isn't as durable, so especially if you're gonna give it away, I recommend something like Rubio Mono Coat. After these finishes are dried, I recommend putting a little bit of oil and wax on there and buffing it out. I think that looks really nice, and that's what you'll use in the future to renew the boards and make them look really good. I had a ton of fun making all these different charcuterie boards and it was really cool to try so many different things. If you end up making a charcuterie board, I would love to see it. I'm on Instagram at builditmakeit, so tag me there so I can check it out. Thanks so much for watching and take care.